Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Katie Jewell, and I am director of bands at Coldwater High School. On behalf of myself, choir director Caitlin Doublestein, and um, the Hall of Fame committee headed by um, Jerry Ford, I would like to welcome you to this evening's Hall of Fame concert. Tonight we'll feature the balladeers, the symphonic band, and soloist who went to state solo and ensemble and earned a Division I rating. So it's going to be a wonderful night of music. Additionally, it will also feature the induction of several of our finest alumni from Coldwater High School into the Music Hall of Fame. So let's give a warm welcome to our special guest this evening, the Hall of Fame inductees. Um, just a few uh, reminders for this evening's concert. Would you please silence all electronic devices and refrain from using them until the concert concludes? Should you need to leave for any reason, please try to do so between songs so as not to disturb the performers or audience members. Please take children who need extra attention to the lobby area. Please refrain from conversation during the musical selections and Hall of Fame presentations. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Up first this evening are the CHS Balladeers under the direction of Caitlin Doublestein, and they will be start off by performing the national anthem. Would you please rise if you are able? Thank you.
gorgeous. That was so beautiful, Balladeers. Thank you for sharing that with us. Up next, I'm going to introduce Jerry Ford, who will be telling you all a little bit about the Hall of Fame program and introducing our first speaker. So please welcome Jerry Ford. Thank you for coming, all of you. What a beautiful music. Let's give another hand. I want to thank Katie Jewell, and I want to thank uh, Caitlin Doublestein and Aaron Wood and Justine Hostaler for putting this on so I can have what I think we need to do to recognize people if you're going to recognize nine five of them. And I'd like to begin with just a couple words before I have Randall Hazenbaker, one of our committee, to come up. Um, the members of my committee are Randall Hazenbaker, myself, Dave Carmen, and I have two honorary members, uh, Gary Myers, and the other is Joy Luckadoo-Mia. Uh, she also sells real estate for our company, and she's one of our brokers. That Luckadoo is a little longer, and it's hard to... I haven't quite got her to agree to let me just do the initials, but it doesn't work, so sorry. Anyway, I'm going to begin with this. This is an appreciation night, not only for things like you just heard, those are future Hall of Famers, but the five that you're going to hear be recognizing tonight, they're musicians in different ways, and they do this. I wrote this down some time ago, and I want to share it with you. They share their talent. They share their creativeness. They share their innovation. They share their happiness. And yes, they too share their love. So recognize these people warmly. When you hear their story and they come up and they receive a plaque, stand up if you can, platform. Because music and people that carry that on for us do those things. And at this time, we'll have Randall Hasenbaker come up. Randall, where are you at? Randall's a little bit tall. I have to look around and find him. Uh, oh, six five. No, I found him. Uh, give Randall a hand. He's a good man. Randall, where are first inductee. Music has been a part of Diane Smith Bridget's life for as long as she can remember. In the farmhouse on River Road, the piano teacher gave Diane's first lessons in the living room on a big upright. Diane's feet couldn't even touch the pedals. From accompanying her brother, a boy soprano at 4-H talent shows, to playing for Sunday school, she was always practicing to avoid chores. It was a CHS choir teacher, Arvid Berg, who influenced her to teach music in the schools, making what she loved her work as well as her play. The CH and CHS, she sang in Cardinal Choir and Balladeers, also singing and playing her vocalists and high school musicals. With graduate studies at MSU and an undergraduate degree from Hillsdale College, she studied organ, choral music, and elementary music. Her senior recital remains an accomplishment that has a, been a delightful memory. In 1974, she was hired by St. Mark's Episcopal Church. She continues as the director of music. Under her leadership, the music program at St. Mark's has been a vital part to the life of the congregation. In 1985, Cobalt Public Schools offered her an elementary music position. Her teaching career began with a piano that was rolled from classroom to classroom, then teaching on a stage, and finally moving into a spacious room equipped with ORF instruments, open areas for movement, and tables for teaching music reading. Her teaching assignment including accompanying high school and middle school choirs for concerts, festivals, and student and solo and ensemble events. In the community, Diane has led Choirs for the luminary celebrations at Relay for Life events helped to support and find rehearsal space for the Branch United Youth Choir, played for Thanksgiving services, served on Tibbetts board directors, 
and played for Brunson Reading and Coldwater High School musicals, a company of rotary shows, and a community theater production. She is a founding member of the Branch County Community Chorus and enjoys adding her voice to these 30 singers. A choir that shares music with many local events. As a memorial to her parents and brothers, Diane plans a benefit concert every September. Several charities have received the concert proceeds. These concerts have featured local musicians and other musical groups from the community to enjoy. Diane's first love is her husband, Mike. They celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary recently. Their family of four children and their spouses and six grandchildren have their hearts. Diane gives God all the glory. Please help me give a warm welcome to Diane Pritchett. while the balladeers are coming back to the risers, I would like to um, personally thank, on behalf of myself and the other directors here, I would like to thank the Hall of Faith inductees for setting such an amazing example for continuing on in music after high school and all of the various ways that you make that happen. You are a joy and an inspiration to all of the band and choir students here at Coldwater High School and to myself and the director. So thank you very much, Hall of Fame inductees. We appreciate you.
and Allegro. excitement in 
and then determination to follow her dream. One of the joys of being an educator is witnessing a student finding their passion. Music therapy, or the use of music in therapy, is not a new concept. The idea of music as a healing influence which could affect health and behavior is at least as old as the writings of Aristotle and Plato. The 20th century profession formally began after World War I when community musicians of all types, both amateur and professional, went to veteran hospitals around the country to play for the thousands of veterans suffering both physical and emotional trauma from the wars. The patient's notable physical and emotional response to music led the doctors and nurses to request the hiring of musicians by the hospitals. It was soon evident that the hospital musicians needed some prior training before entering the facility, and so the demand grew for a college curriculum. In the last 50 years, the profession has grown and become universally accepted as a way of reaching people to help them heal. There's a quality in music like no other, and can often help a person who is struggling with issues that other therapies can't reach. Erin Aaron obtained her music therapy degree from Western Michigan University in 2002. She did a year internship at the Fort Wayne Development Center in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Erin has spent the last 17 years working with clients across Southern Michigan, some as far as Washtenaw County. Around Ann Arbor, Erin worked with children who were either emotionally and or physically impaired. Through music, she calmed, she soothed, she brought these children out of their cocoons. Some smiled for the first time ever. As time passed, and being a busy mom and wife, Erin decided to bring her work closer to home. She currently works with Hospice of Hillsdale County. Through her love and use of music, Erin is able to bring much joy and tra tranquility to those who face their own mortality. Erin loves what she does, and she is loved by others for what she does for them. She mixes her musical skills with her innate wisdom and her wonderful personality to do amazing things for her clients. This is why Erin Brewer has been nominated to the Coldwater High School Music Hall of Fame.
recognizing talent tonight in more than one way, aren't we? Let's give them another hand. What good talent. I want to thank the balladeers. I want to thank the band members and, and the choir members that participate tonight in this wonderful program that helps us to have another wonderful program recognizing talent that's been and still is. And tonight I have the honor of presenting Dave Carmen. Uh, Dave Carmen, you just saw it presented to his student. So I'm going to be the presenter to him. I know a little bit about him. Uh, he's a lot bigger than I am. Uh, no. Uh, he plays the trumpet very well, but he also plays the tuba, or no, baritone, or he sometimes calls it like euphonium. I don't even know how to spell it. Anyway, he's an excellent player on that euphonium. Uh, I wish he could play tonight, but himself is on my part. He went to Celine High School, that's where he grew up. He was in the concert band, the marching band, pep band, and choir. Uh, he belonged to an organization called Musical Youth International. I'd never heard about it until now uh, when I received this nomination. It's a people-to-people -people, uh, chapter and had 50-piece band and 50-voice choir. And Dave said he was in both. So I asked him tonight, I said, well, did you do 50 of the instruments and then you 50 of one or did the choir? No, I said it was just eight of them that rotated. They did both. So. This is interesting. They traveled to the British Isles his first summer of high school. And they went to Northern Europe the second summer. And the third year, he was at the Mediterranean Sea around Greece. And he said the first two years, two summers, he lived with the people. And the other, I'm not sure, but he might have sailed around on some illegal ship. <laughs> anyway, um, he graduated from Eastern College. And uh, he got a degree in uh, music education, and then he went, uh, let's see, he's done so much, it's unbelievable, and that's why we're recognizing. He was in the symphonic band, the marching band, the jazz band, and the university choir. So he not only had heard him sing yet. I, uh, maybe we could do that some night at the Branch County Band. Um, anyway, he ended up with a master's degree at Michigan. I'm real happy about that. Um, in instrumental music education, and his emphasis was in conducting. Now, isn't that strange? He became a band director and he was a conductor. Uh, see what Michigan does for you. Michigan State's my second. Uh, um, anyway, I noticed that one of his uh, conducting teachers was Robert Reynolds, and I think that was a famous guy at Michigan. I remember that name. Um, his first teaching job out of high school, or out of college, was Deerfield, Michigan. He said it was a very small school. He taught all the grades, and then uh, the next year uh, opened up at Milan, Michigan. He said that he had been a student uh, uh, learning there, and then uh, he taught uh, middle school for a year, and then he moved up to the high band, the high school, for six more years, and then uh, he had a lot to do with Milan and their new uniforms, and they ended up getting top ratings. So we know he does good wherever he's been. He was looking for another job, another step up, and he had to find Coldwater. And uh, he, uh, he dealt with Stan Bushhouse, the principal, and Earl Gleason, the band uh, booster president. And then, like he said, who would have known that he would be there, uh, I think it was 24 years, of uh, the high school band and two years of the middle school. And uh, he said he met his wife here, Deb, and they have three children. And uh, it, it guys, it just, I can almost cry when I hear all this that he accomplished. Uh, I'm impressed. Can we give him a little hand before the big hand at the end? <laughs> I don't want to leave anything out, but I, there's so much that he's accomplished. Um, he said one of the best things that he remembered in, in all the years he had at Coldwater was the Marching Band Festival in 1987. The band, uh, he was involved with that and they had new uniforms and he said they were very proud and he said very confident. And he said he remembered that in 1987, the festival, he said that they, they used fire extinguishers on their uh, third song and I believe it is Where Is Love from the musical Oliver. Um, do I know all that? No, but I can read it. Uh, 
anyway, uh, he said that they use fire extinguishers and it, 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 the, the smoke held low. And it, he said it gave it a, uh, how did he describe it? Oh, i got to see where I wrote this. It gave you the impression that you were floating on a cloud. And, and it, it was a wonderful feeling. I just, uh, i got to read this. This is something he wrote at the end and it stuck with me. It, I still remember when I was in high school trying to decide what I wanted to do when I grew up. Even though I loved music, it didn't seem quite right to make a living at something that was so much fun for me. I'm glad I didn't let that get in the way. I have thoroughly enjoyed my years of teaching and can't imagine having done anything else. That brings tears to my eyes. Let's give a hand for David Carmen. David, please come up. I am so proud of you and so are these people. And that's why they're applauding whether they know you or not. There you go. Would you like to say a few words? This is just such an honor. It's neat to come back and the program, excuse me, is doing so well. It's just wonderful to hear all. Thank you very much. is trumpet player Amelia Gerth, and she will be performing Prelude at the Lot. Welcome to the stage, Amelia. Um, another song for you. They're going to be uh, singing Siku Cherbus, 
And while they're coming up here, I would like to let everybody here know that the volunteers just went to state solo and ensemble last week where they earned a Division I rating. Let's give them a big round of applause. After the Balladeers finish this, um, this piece, we will have a very brief transition as the symphonic band takes the stage and gets warmed up in tunes, and we will be back with you as soon as possible. So, Balladeers, take it away with Siku Cherbus.
Next, we have um, two more Hall of Fame people who will be inducted. So I'd like to invite Jerry Ford to come on back up. Was that a big city event that's outstanding? Is that worth another applause? Yeah. I want to call up Gary. Oh, there you are. Hey, wait. I'm not giving his words up, but I'll tell you, one of them is a professional singer, and one of them is a retired recently French horn. Thanks, sir. I'd like you to tell you. It's exciting. This is exciting. You're excited. Thanks for coming. Hey, before we go, Jerry, did you go to kiss me again? Not in front of you. Oh, okay. He's doing better. Turn your heads, please. Take, take your pill. Hey, I just want to give a shout out to Jerry Ford for starting this Hall of Fame in 2006. So it's been 13 years of you honoring a lot of outstanding musicians who've come here. Your vision, your wallet. Your energy has made this happen. So, I'm very lucky. I got good support. I got you. I got four high school. I forgot to say, don't forget, this is CHS. Thank you. And when we talk about CHS, we talk about the class of '66 right there. And repeat after me, everybody. Askiwawa. That's CHS. Well, there are numerous ways to make a living in the music industry. One can teach at the junior high level, the high school level, or the college level. One can give private lessons, or one can work as a composer, an arranger, a transcriber, or as a producer, engineer in the recording studio. One can perform live in nightclubs or bars or in a concert setting. The performance pinnacle is the recording artist. You play it or sing it once, and you get paid over and over. It's a pretty good deal, it goes. Yeah. The next two inductees fall into the latter two categories, concert performers and first call recording artists. These two women are arguably the most successful instrumentalist and vocalist to ever grace the CHS campus. What was their secret sauce? Well, they both have the ability to sight read music perfectly with no mistakes, on demand. A lot of pressure. This is one of the few things these ladies have in common. Of course, they both attended CHS, but this is interesting. Both their fathers were healers. One was a pastor and the other was a doctor. They both performed at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles and at Carnegie Hall in New York City. opportunities to fine-tune her musical abilities developed in this community. Two teachers were key figures in her training, one Mrs. Marguerite Livermore, the other Doug Hoopengarner. Mrs. Livermore expanded her keyboard skills, which enabled her to become an organist for churches, weddings, and the 1965 CHS baccalaureate service. Mr. Hoopengarner gave her the opportunity to expand vocally by placing her in the balladeers. We've heard them tonight, haven't we? Now, if you look up there, you'll see Diane, and next to Cosette, has got the aeroplane, and next to her is uh, Mark Feller, who was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 19, oops, 2012. 
So that was a that's probably a pretty strong battle. Deer's going through that's the th three Hall of Famers in that alone. Uh, that's where she learned her sight reading skills way back in Coldwater High School. Upon graduating from high school, Cosette majored in music education at Anderson University in Indiana. And while she was there, she traveled every summer with a professional music group. After graduating from Anderson, she signed a contract to teach elementary school in California, but she broke that contract to travel full time with a nationally distinguished Christian music group out of Detroit called Thurlow Spur and the Spurlows. After one year, she took one day to travel from Detroit to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where she joined another national music group called The Sound Generation. And The Sound Generation toured with Roy Clark for several years. They launched at the Landmark Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, and continued performing across the entire country for a couple of years, and this was in the early 70s. Well, wanting to settle down and start a family with her husband, because I was fortunate enough to be invited by Anderson University to put together a group called Everyday People, which had national exposure. In 1974, Cosette became acquainted with the legendary Bill and Gloria Gaither, who asked her to become a part of their concert performances. Cosette sang backup for the Gaithers with her buddies Sandy Patty and Steve Green, not bad, for eight years, which included performing in arenas in every major U.S. city and Israel. As Sandy's career blossomed, Cosette was asked to join her national tour as part of an ensemble which included performances at the great theaters I mentioned earlier and Radio City Music Hall in New York City. Cosette also sang on many of Sandy's albums and between tours, she took up the job as contractor for recording studios in Indianapolis and Fort Wayne, Indiana, Cincinnati, Ohio, Louisville, Lexington, Kentucky, Chicago, Illinois, and Grand Rapids. Contractors are people who find people to work and make money, but that's kind of cool. Cosette has also recorded on literally hundreds of albums and CDs, including Johnny Mathis's 2002 Christmas CD. Cosette has also sung for over 40 years on, dig this number, over 1,100 radio and television jingles. Juicy Fruit, AT&T, and Coca-Cola. Let's take a look at one of those. still singing with a swing style big, big band called the Cool City Band and continues to sing at her local church which she's done all of her life. Let's listen to a little more of Koza. I don't know why but I'm feeling so sick I long to try something I've never Thank you. 
Rosanette Beach Myers. When he won a job with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, we moved west. 
Big city life was a bit overwhelming for me, but the opportunities were vast. Let's look at one of these opportunities right now. Everybody knows what a musical note sounds like. But what does a note look like? When it comes from the audio system of the Lexus ES300, That was in 1992. That was Carol on the French horn there, and that was uh, during the Rose Bowl of 1992. Good. Sounds good second time, too. <laughs> uh, and that played, of course, all over the, the country, and that was quite an honor for her. Uh, let's see, where am I? Okay. Oh, when, uh, at this time, she was playing, she herself was playing with the LA Phil, as they're known. And she went on many exciting tours to Europe and Mexico and Japan and Korea with conductors that included Andre Previn, Henry Mancini, John Williams, Leonard Bernstein, Carlo Maria Ulini, <laughs> Eric Leinsdorf, Pierre Boulet, Asa Pekka Salomon, and Gustavo Dudamel. And of course, the famous Zubin Mehta, who conducted that symphony for many years. Boy, she, she was playing with heavy hitters there. With these tours, she played uh, 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 the Hollywood Bowl, Walt Disney Concert Hall, Carnegie Hall, the Royal Albert Hall in London. She played for more movies than she can remember, but here's a list of a few of them. She played, of course, we saw Back to the Future, Matilda, Throw Mama from the Train, The Fugitive, Lemony Snicket, I didn't see that one, The Sandlot, Ice Age, Men in Black. She did a lot of movies, and that's, that's, that's a lot of pressure going to the studio and having to do it perfect on demand. She also performed with Kenny Rogers, Barbara Streisand, and Natalie Cole. Wow. Let me just say this, because uh, Carol retired just a couple of years ago, more than satisfied with her musical accomplishments. She still loves to go to concerts and enjoying music while watching others do the work. Let's give a big hand, Carol. So I want to present this to you uh, in honor of her, and I'd like to thank you and enjoy lucky to be that assisted. I'd like to thank the two honorary members of our committee that put this together, so you can see what some of our CHS students did and what CHS CHS students here when you come. Thank you again, Gary. My pleasure. <laughs>
performing a piccolo solo, and she will be performing movement two of piccolo concerto. And she will be accompanied by one of our CHS band and choir members, Lexi Gallers.
one more big round of applause for all of our soloists this evening. So please give the symphonic band a warm round of applause and wish them good skill. 